Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 20-14 win versus the Carolina Panthers in Thursday Night Football in Week 2. So, without further ado guys, let's talk about it. Let's go through the bad before we start talking about the good. Now, the first guy that I want to talk about is... O.J. Howard, this is his second time being on the bad list for the second week in a row. I know it's only been two games, but still, O.J. continued to struggle this week, and it was very apparent, not just in running his routes, but really, really struggling in blocking this week. A lot of people in the live stream chat pointed it out to me, and I definitely noticed it myself while watching the game. O.J. just hasn't been looking like himself, not just as a receiver, but as a blocker as well. Two things that he's usually pretty darn good at so I really hope he gets out of this funk that he's in I don't know if he's a little bit hampered by injury or he's just kind of in a little bit of a funk right now but here's hoping he gets out of it because we definitely need him we definitely need him he's a super super uh, valuable weapon to this team he helps out Jameis Winston a lot he's very valuable for his size and for his receiving ability a lot of people thought this is going to be his breakout year and it still can be he just needs to get back on the right track Another guy who struggled again in this game was DeMar Dodson. Not so much in blocking. He definitely got better uh, as the game went on in terms of his overall blocking. Um, the O-line did struggle at some points. I do want to point that out here because I really don't know if I'm going to be able to point it out later on in the video. Uh, the offensive line did struggle in certain bits in the second half with pass blocking. In the first half, they looked pretty good, all things considered. But as time went on, they get a little bit more winded, a little bit more gas, and they started to let more pressure come in and started to falter a little bit in run blocking as well but Dotson he still needs to clean up those penalties that's still something that continues to haunt his game coming into se the uh, second week as well he just has these killer penalties you know it wasn't as bad in week two as it was in week one but still just shape up a little bit Dotson I know you can do it I do believe in you you're one of my favorite Buccaneers just get back on track again just get back into some things um, and, and try and get out of this funk that you're in as well this, you know, the blocking, it's been pretty hit or miss, but the thing that's been really killer for Dodson's play so far up to this point is the penalties. Next person that is on my bad list is, unfortunately, Brashawn Perriman. And this one's really upsetting to me because Brashawn Perriman, he's one of my guys, man. He's one of my favorite guys on this Buccaneers offense. I was so happy when we signed him. He looked so good in the preseason. He looked so good in training camp. But so far, through the first two weeks of the regular season, he struggled a little bit catching the ball. And that's not good, especially in this game. You know, he dropped a wide-open touchdown pass, went right through his hands, would have really helped out the team a lot in a dire situation and it just slipped right through his hands he had another couple of drops earlier on in the game as well I just want to see some improvement here I'm a little bit scared because I really don't want to see his play regress right now after so many good things that I saw from him in training camp and in preseason I want to see Brashad Perriman bounce back from these two bad first games that he had he had a couple of I think he had a drop or two in week one uh, as well versus the San Francisco 49ers and he had a, a couple of non uh, you know catch catches here as well versus the Carolina Panthers. So I really want to see Brashad Perriman get back on track. He was one of my favorite weapons that we signed on the offensive side of the ball in the offseason. He's a phenomenal deep threat. He just has got to catch the ball, okay? I know it's it's tough sometimes, but yeah, and you're in the NFL. You got to make some of these catches. He dropped a, you know, not even dropped. It went through his hands. Uh, wide open touchdown pass, and it was a great throw by Jameis Winston. It went right through Perriman's hands. You got to make those catches, baby. So get back on track, Perriman. I'm really pulling for you here, man two things I want to talk about are penalties and the referees. Let's talk about the penalties first. And this is a whole team thing, okay? Uh, the Buccaneers had 12 accepted penalties for 66 yards in this game. And that's on the whole team. Okay, that's just penalties that were accepted. I think if you also include non-accepted penalties, I believe it comes around as somewhere like 13 to 14 penalties. Whenever you compare that to the Carolina Panthers, five penalties in this game, that's right along the average that we've determined a while ago. It's not good. Buccaneers are way above the average. You know, they're more than, they're double the average right now in terms of penalties in this game. They completely fell off the rails. Uh, they, they didn't do so good in week one either. I believe they had eight accepted penalties in week one 
and 12 in this one you got to get more discipline you really have to okay and i've seen a lot of them uh, on the offensive line and some in the secondary as well those are kind of the two main culprits so far uh, you need to clean up those penalties you really really do because you know that really factors in a lot into drives it can help out the other team in humongous humongous waves give them automatic first downs and whatnot and it can really 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 ruin drives on offense we saw that multiple times in this game against the carolina panthers where we were very close we were in manageable situations third and one and then all of a sudden oh it's a 10 yard penalty or oh it's a five yard penalty that makes those situations so much harder so guys please cut down on the penalties second week in a row now where you're way above the average you got to cut down on these penalties you got to get more discipline that's something that bruce hates he's going to keep on dogging you about it. he's going to keep on yelling you about it please just clean up these penalties man then finally the referees really bad officiating in this game especially towards the second half a lot of no calls a lot of bad ball placements and this could be my bias speaking it probably is but i think you know, Bucks fans, there were certain situations. I believe it was a fourth and one, or it was a third down, something like that. I believe it was a third down, and it, there's no way it was a first down. I promise you it was not a first down. The referee that was at the sidelines had the ball behind the yellow line. He tossed it to the referee in the middle of the field. The referee put it over the yellow line after it was behind the yellow line initially. That was that was awful. They didn't review it. They didn't look at it. There was other no calls and other bad penalties. That's just NFL referees at the end of the day. I'm sure they didn't help out the Panthers as well in certain situations. But I think it's just something every NFL fan can complain about. Can can uh, complain about is NFL referees. Man, sometimes they just really suck at their jobs. That's why they're on the bad list here go to the good list and I have my iPad with me so I can pull up stats and talk to you guys about certain things and the first guy I want to talk about is Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin finished this game with eight catches, 121 yards and a touchdown. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Okay, this is the Chris Godwin Bucks fans wanted to see. Last week, he was pretty quiet, and this week, bam, this is the Godwin that everybody is excited for. Bruce Arians, Jason Light, every single person in the Buccaneers fan base, even some people in the national media. How rare is that, right? This is the Chris Godwin that we all wanted to see, and we finally got it, okay? Eight catches, 121 yards, one touchdown. The guy did absolutely great, and the Carolina Panthers, they were doubling up Mike Evans a lot. They were really really trying to take Mike Evans out of this game. He still had some good moments here or there, but Godwin was the star of the offense. He's the offensive player of the game, basically, for my money's worth. He did such a wonderful job. Keep it going. Keep on building that momentum. Mike Evans, he's been a little bit quiet in the first two weeks. In week one, he did have the flu, and then in week two, the Carolina Panthers literally did everything in their power to make sure, hey, get Mike Evans out of here, but then Godwin showed up, you know? So I think that we're going to see more balance as time goes on. We're going to see Evans get his numbers in we're gonna see Godwin get his numbers in both these guys could get a thousand yards at this point I, at first I didn't believe it but Godwin's you know Godwin's getting there and I think Evans is definitely gonna get his you know, we have a good couple of wide receivers, and that definitely showed in tonight's game against Carolina. A few guys I want to quickly shout out on the offensive side of the ball. Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber, 23 carries, 82 yards, and a touchdown. He ran so hard tonight. We didn't see a lot of Rojo. I don't know if he got dinged up and then taken out of the game or what, but it was almost exclusively Peyton Barber for most of the game. He had 23 carries, two Ronald Jones, four carries, and man, Barber did some good stuff with his carries. This also also feeds into the uh, theory of Bruce Arians riding the hot hand and whatnot during games. Barber looked good. He had a touchdown run, got some big holes, fought for all the extra yards. He did a really, really good job. I was happy to see that. You know, Ronald Jones, the, the few carries he did get, he did do some things with him. His longest run was 12 yards. That was a nice thing to see. And then finally, the last guy I want to talk about on the offensive side of the ball, Jameis Winston, 16 of 25, 200 eight yards one touchdown zero picks zero turnovers in this game Jameis Winston didn't have a turnover I know how crazy that is right like come on man that's absolutely insane Jameis Winston didn't have a turnover he managed the game and we won that's that's great okay that's what you want to see from Jameis Winston just keep on doing that man because the defense the defense is doing some great things Jameis you can still be Jameis Winston you can still go out there and gunsling it and whatnot but I love seeing these games where Jameis Winston he just sits there he says 
I'm just going to take what the defense gives me. I'm just going to throw it to guys who are open, you know, and just really take what's given to me right now and just work on not turning the ball over. We saw that tonight and it worked out beautifully. So shout out to Peyton Barber, shout out to Ronald Jones, shout out to Jameis Winston. They all did some great jobs. I was especially impressed by Jameis Winston in this game. No turnovers, praise the Lord. Teams, guys, I want to shout out real quick before we move to the defensive side of the ball. Zach Trinner, who made a tackle that saved a punt return for a touchdown. That was absolutely awesome. Like, seriously, shout out to our long snapper, Zach Trinner. That was beautiful tackle okay keep it up man you did great there you saved a touchdown shout out to you bradley pinion did some really really good punting in this game he really made it hard for the Carolina Panthers, really pinned them back deep in their own territory and really helped in terms of giving the defense some cushion, giving them a little bit of leeway in terms of field position and whatnot. So shout out to those two special teams players. They did a really good job. Matt Gay, he had some redemption. He did miss a kick tonight, but he also made a couple of his other kicks as well. He only missed the one field goal. So, you know, struggled a little bit, but I think he can bounce back. So special teams unit as a whole tonight really, really did a good job compared to week one. Now we can go to the defensive side of the ball. First person I want to talk about Vernon Hargraves finished the game with 12 total tackles 11 solo tackles they targeted Vernon Hargraves so much in this game it was incredible it was absolutely incredible to see they threw the ball so much his way it was insane, but he did a good job. He was a very sure tackler in tonight's game. He missed very few tackles, if any tackles, and he made the play of the game, stopped Christian McCaffrey on first on fourth down sorry, to win the game. That's tough. It was one-on-one, -on -one, Hargraves versus McCaffrey. McCaffrey usually wins those battles, especially against a cornerback, but Hargraves delivered. Hargraves 100% delivered, was a sure tackler, was fine in coverage. He was good. He was really, really good. Shout Shout out to Vernon Hargraves. He continues to just be absolutely phenomenal. He's fully healthy and he's showing what he can do and I'm all for it. I'm so happy that we can finally see Vernon Hargraves fully healthy and ready to go. Gordon Whitehead had six tackles in his own right. Shout out to him. Levante David had seven tackles. He continued to do a good job. Carlton Davis is another guy that I thought had a really good game. He finished with seven tackles. All of them were solo tackles. In the same case of Vernon Hargraves, he was a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverages. They turned targeted him a lot as well, but he also delivered in a very similar way. He still had a penalty here or there, but if I'm being honest, some of them I feel were shouldn't have been called at all, and the one, the big face mask penalty that he had, I think that that should have been offsetting penalties personally, so I think that Carlton Davis had a very, very good game in his own right. Jordan Whitehead, Levante David, they still continue to be great. They did absolutely phenomenal. Another quick guy I want to shout out real quick is Devin White actually left this game with a sprained knee. I know people were freaking out and saying ACL, ACL, sprained knee, he'll be fine. But Kevin Minter filled in and he finished the night with eight tackles. That's awesome. He's one half of the machines. I love to see Kevin Minter go out there, do his thing. I'm a big Kevin Minter fan. I was really happy to see him go out there, fill in for Devin White, and overall do a pretty decent job. He looked awesome in the run game, in the pass game. I definitely saw some very questionable things happening, but all things considered, I think Kevin Minter did a really, really good job and filled out his role very, very well. And then you still have Jordan Whitehead, Levante, David, Carlton Davis, Vernon Hargraves. They were all just tackling machines. Three more guys I want to shout out Anthony Nelson had a very very good game for a rookie he had a batted pass and he also had a forced fumble on Cam Newton that was sick and Namakin Sue recovered that fumble so shout out to him he was actually kind of quiet this game but still I thought he did a decent job all things considered Vita Vea continues to be Vita Vea the big hulking man he is and just killing people he smacked cam newton down one time that was great to see and he just continues to look so good in the run game vita vea keep doing your thing but you know the big big star my player of the game and you guys all know who it is it's shaq freaking barrett three sacks on the night four sacks on the season he now is six sacks away from having 10 sacks on the year he's going to be the next double digit sack guy since jason Pierre paul and then even further back than that since simeon rice and we're only two games 
into the year. He sacked Cam Newton three times tonight. Could have been five sacks if Cam Newton would have held the ball on for another millisecond or longer. He looked so good. This was Shaq Barrett's coming out game, and I was all for it. If you guys saw the live stream reactions and whatnot, I lost my mind. He had two sacks in a row. I believe he had three sacks on that just single drive, and he just continued to get pressure more and more as the game went on. It was so phenomenal. I love Shaq Barrett. He's my player of the game. I told you guys how excited I was whenever he came to the team. I was making video after video about him and how much I was gushing about the guy. We're starting to see you know, the Shaq Barrett that was put down in Denver. And he, he, you know, he came in as a rotational pass rusher in Denver and he did so good and he just needed that chance to start. He's getting it in Tampa and he's showing why, you know, he was my favorite offseason signing and why even the national media were saying, wow, the Buccaneers got a really, really good deal here. It's because he's going to come in and he's just going to be a productive pass rusher right away. And I'm all for it, okay? Shaq Barrett's my player of the game. He did a phenomenal job. Guys, that's it for my review. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. What players did you like and not like from this game? Let me know down in the comment section below. And let me know what you think about the Buccaneers win. One and one, baby. One and one right there. The Carolina Panthers are last in the NFC South. That is officially stamped in at least until week three, and then we figure out what happens after week three. But awesome, awesome win. Very happy to see it. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. But until the next video or the next live stream, I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks. We're going to have Victory Friday tomorrow, and it's going to be great.